What's up guys, Chasing Lamely here with episode number 67 of Robin's Revival. Apologies for today's episode being late. I was going to record it yesterday, unfortunately. So you might not know this, I'm also a freelance journalist and uh, with the Queen dying I was called to be available for work as rapidly as possible. So I did not have much time to do any recording. Apologise for that. Hit like and subscribe though, let's get into it. Let's see who has come and gone as we head into season 9, our third season in the Premier League. There's been some big moves, you're going to want to see this. Troll the intro. So let's talk transfers then for reference before we go through them one by one. I have spent upwards of 93 million, I think it is, and I've brought in 121 million in terms of finances. But of course, we talk about who has come, who has gone, and let's start with the players who have gone, shall we? And the first man out the door, which was a surprise to many of you, shows just how deep the rebuild has gone. Nathan Baxter has joined Tottenham for £16.5 million. He also won his first England cap the day before he left us. They signed him as their cup goalkeeper, which is ridiculous, quite frankly, because he will be among their best goalkeepers, but he has joined Tottenham. He's had a really good run for us. We signed him for 175 k He's made 100 and, what, 17, 19... He's made 100 odd appearances for us. He's played, played over 100 games for the pub. Always turned in more than a 7 average rating and has just been very, very good for us on our rise from the Championship to the Premier League and staying in the Premier League. So thank you for your service, Nathan Baxter. Hopefully you'll have a good run at Spurs, or I think he's probably going to be stuck as a number two, which is a little bit disappointing. But so be it. Let's have a look at who else has come in. Right, youngster I signed a while ago, Jose Ramon, Jose Ramon Moreno, has joined Tranmere in a deal that is worth £88,000, it could rise with some sell-ons and whatnot. He's not actually played for us, he's had a season in the Conference South, he had a couple of seasons on loan back in Spain, didn't look like he was going to make it, he signed for us for nothing, so I thought we'd just move him on, I say for nothing, he came through our youth team, but you know, I thought we'd move him on because he just wasn't making it here. And out on loan, but with a built-in transfer fee, Cody Drama has gone to Brighton for the season, he has gone for 1.3 million on the initial loan, but there is an option to buy him for 3.9 million. So he will probably be staying there. I can't imagine they wouldn't keep him at that price. We'll still be a profit. We've already made a profit on him. We signed him for a million pounds. And uh, he's, again, he's done well for us, but oh, I've signed better players. It was time to move him on, which shows you just how good a summer window we've had, actually. And another illustration of that is Glenn Gould, who has joined Southampton. Staying in the Premier League, but he's joined Southampton for 17.25 million. Again, another player had a great run for us. He was captain of the side pretty much from the time he started playing for us in the Championship second season. He was with us, I believe. He was already there and thereabouts as our captain. But again, the time came to move him on, and uh, 17.25 million. He's, he's won a few caps for South Africa, or more than 28 caps for South Africa. He's still only 22, could still develop, but I've signed better players again, so it is time for him to go. Now, his next time I mentioned when the deals were done, John Stones has joined Real Espalis in Spain. I think it's Real Betis in real life. He joined them on a free, his contract ran out, he didn't want to re-sign, and fair play to him. He had a great run for us in that one season. Pretty good for a player of his age, but I was happy to let him go. I think he was on £110,000 a week for us, and we've got him off the wage bill. And again, replaced him with a better player, so I can't complain at all. More disappointing was Raul Seixas, who has joined Udinese on a free. I signed him, I really thought he was going to develop into a strong player for us long term, but I sent him on loan for a couple of years. When I tried to offer him a new contract, he thought he'd outgrown the club, which I mean, okay, fair play, you try your luck, but he's gone to play for Udinese in Serie A. I've not made a loss in him, so I can't complain at all with him either. And another former first-team regular who has left is Abaldo Morul. He's joined Ipswich on a free at the end of his contract. He wasn't developing beyond being a championship player at best. 
So he's gone back to the championship. He had five seasons with us, which is a pretty good run for a guy. I signed on a free. He's got to move on on a free as well. I got a loan fee off of MK Dons when he went there, which was nice. So I did make a little bit of money on him over the course of the time he was with the club. But it was time to let him move on. A few of our players have gone to a switch over the last few years. We may well be seeing him again in the near future. And another shocker, Jose Manuel Lopez has joined Monaco. He's 28. And Parody had come on so much on his loan at Brentford that I decided to take a gamble. I sold him to Monaco for £34 million, which is a great chunk of money coming off the player I signed for £7.75 million just a couple of seasons ago. He's had a few goals for us. 28 goals in 64 league appearances is not a bad return, but I think Parody is going to score many, many more for us. And it felt like time to move on the old guard to let the new guy have a chance. We've also got to score Shatovsky as well, so we're not short of cover. Jose Manuel Lopez out the door. And another former first team regular gone, Lewis Gibson, has joined Nottingham Forest. He has disappeared in a deal worth the grand total of 10.25 million. I signed him for 350k. I part exchanged him for someone I couldn't tell you now for the life of me who I part exchanged him for. But even so, it's worked out well for us. We've made 10.25 million. He's gone down to the championship with Nottingham Forest. He'll be missed, but also we've moved on beyond him and he got a good 120, 160 odd games in for us. So he's had a good run and, you know, hopefully he'll continue to have a good career for Forest. He's still got a couple of years left in him. He is only 29, but it was time for him to move along, move along make way for someone else, unfortunately. Another of our youngsters left as well, Emmanuel Kane, the Nigerian under-20 international, who I believe came through our youth system several seasons ago, has joined Huddersfield for 1.1 million. It could rise to 1.9, including add-ons. He never actually played a game for us in any meaningful way. I think he played a cup game once, but I don't really remember. He's had a few seasons out on loan in the Banarama leagues. He's played in all three Banarama leagues, but he wasn't developing enough for me to think he was going to make it as a star. And apparently Huddersfield saw something in him and decided to give him a chance. So fair play. Hopefully, hopefully they'll uh, develop him into something special. Hector Bellerin has also left us. He's joined Fenerbahce. He was 34 and he wasn't really starting for us. So selling him for 78k. The only loss I think I've made this window. I signed him for 2.5 to fill a hole. He played 11 times. Filled that hole for me. But again, time to move him on. He was ageing and he was declining quite rapidly when we let him go. And we don't really need him anymore. So good luck to him, but his time serving us is over. And another player we signed years ago, Trent Stewart, one of the young soap developed. He's joined Wrexham in a deal for £16,000. I actually signed him on a free from AFC Sudbury, but I had to give him, I think, half his fee when he moved on. So, you know, it is what it is for us. He had a good run with us. I mean, he played for us for, what, five seasons? He's played, what, once for us in the Championship. And he, again, didn't really look like he was developing the way I hoped he would. He's had some good seasons in League 1 and League 2. I think he'll be a big signing for Wrexham in League 1. So, you know, maybe we'll see him again. Maybe we won't. But time will tell. And another young student developer we like is Ruan Marvin. He's gone to AEK Athens. They've signed him for us for 88k. We have signed him on free. He's had loans just about everywhere in the world. I think he's been to three continents on loan, which is pretty impressive. But again, he wasn't making it, so it was time for him to move on to find greener pastures. Maybe he'll develop into something down the line, but he's certainly not there yet, and he's certainly not close to being there. So he moved on, and we've just taken the money. A few more young as well. Nikita Katelnikov has joined Amkar. He was a Russian 20 international who couldn't get, a, couldn't get a work permit after I signed him, unfortunately. So he's gone to Amkar in Russia for 110k. He's already played for them, which is good for him. And he's moving on back in his homeland. Maybe he'll develop down the line, but he certainly wasn't developing at any rate that I could justify keeping him. So off he goes. And another youth prospect, under-20 England international, Connor Westwood, a goalkeeper, again from our youth team. He's joined Bournemouth and he's gone out for 42k, but again, we paid nothing for him. Obviously impressed Bournemouth whilst he was on in the Banarama National for a month last year. Enough for them to sign him. He's played a few games for us, played a couple of Premier League games, which might have just influenced their decision to sign him. Who knows? He is wanted on loan by someone as well, which is interesting. Bromley, so that could be he could have another season out on loan and maybe he'll develop into something, but I really don't see it happening. Another youth signing we had was Peter Barry. He's gone and joined Ipswich. I told you some players have joined Ipswich this summer. 
we got him through our uses for nothing. We just made some money on him, loaning him out over the years. Playing League Two for New Newport last season, he's now in the Championship. It was 125k the fee they played for him. And again, I didn't think he was going to develop into anything special, so I just kind of let him go. And who knows? Maybe he'll prove me wrong. Come back up with it, which is another player he's probably going to go on loan. Go to Lincoln or Harrogate, which is interesting. We'll see what happens with him. He's under 21 international. Maybe he'll still become good. Back to the big money sales, Roland Salai, the Hungarian international with 100 caps. I sold him to Wolves for 11.75 million. I signed him on a free at the beginning of last season, but what I did when I signed him to make him join was I gave him a, a match highest earner clause in his contract and his wages were spiraling out of control. He went up to 110,000, I think, by the time he left. And he wasn't worth it. He's not even putting seven ratings on average, so he wasn't worth it at 32. We've moved him on. 12 million profit essentially. I can't complain about that in any way, shape, or form. Pavel Krasovir, another youngster I was trying to develop, a 22 year old Ukrainian, has joined Karabag. I got a good fee for this guy for a guy I signed for nothing 1.1 million pounds from Karabag. Good business. Frankly, good business. Had a season in San Marino. He never got a work permit. He's moved on, and we're going to move on without him. And who knows if he goes on to become something? Probably not. That's probably his career at the top level done. But we'll soon find out, I guess. And big money for a player we never saw. Adolfo Gutierrez did get a work permit. He wasn't in our first team. He was looking like maybe developing, but I didn't have any faith he would. Had a really good season alone at Wickham last year. But then West Ham offered me 7.25 million for him, and I didn't think he was ever going to play in my first team. So I took it. The Uruguayan player, I think he's an international, or he's certainly an under-20 international, has moved to West Ham, our Premier League rivals, so there is a really good chance we'll see him again. Who knows, though? Who knows where his career will go? We'll keep you posted, I guess. Bismarck has finally left the club as well. He's joined Zenit St. Petersburg in Russia for 5.75 million. Another player I signed for nothing. Really good turnaround on him. He has played for Portsmouth, for Mill, and for Cardiff in the Championship and had good seasons where everywhere he's gone, so for a good signing for Zenit, but I didn't think he was breaking into my first team. I didn't think he was going to be one of our top defenders. So I decided to let him go, and we'll see if we come across him at some stage down the line. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I mean, he could, could come back, but I'm not sure. Jaquiel Marshall Rutty has gone on loan to Southampton as well. He's on the fringes of my first team now, having gone through the summer window. They paid us 180k to loan him for the season. And if he can get a few games for Southampton, who knows where he comes back in terms of quality. But for now, I don't feel bad about letting him go. He's not going to be a big threat to us. And if he gets some football under his belt, comes back better. Good for us, I guess. Gerson Fair has gone out on loan. I felt bad about this loan. I've loaned him out to our rivals, Reading. But he wasn't going to be in our first team this year because I've made some good signings at left back. He's played six times in the Premier League for us. He's played twice in the Championship already. He can only get better. And if he gets better at Reading, he gets better at Reading. He's still coming home to us, and he's still going to be a big star for us for the future. Our final big, big money sale is Antonio Augusto. He's joined whoever set our uh, Palmeiras in Brazil. 11.75 million for a player I signed for 2.7k is an incredible profit. Had a couple of seasons out on loan. He's been at Ipswich, he's been at Portsmouth, he's been at Warsaw. He's done well where he, wherever he went. He also played a game for us in the Premier League last season. I could recall him as only a backup for Baxter. But again, I didn't know if I was going to make 11.75 million of benefit from him on the pitch. So I thought I'd make the benefit from him in the bank. And again, replaced by a better player. So let's not panic too much. And finally on the outs, Yerson Mascara. So both of our big centre-half signs we came to the Premier League have gone. Yerson Mascara has joined Fulham, continuing his long run in England. They paid 3.5 million to take him to the Championship, which made us a profit of 1.2 million off a player who played 23 Premier League games for us. I think that's a pretty good return. I think the Championship is probably a really good level for him. I think he'll get a lot of football down there. So, good deal for us, good deal for him. He was also starting to get on a little bit in age. He's 28 years old, which I know makes him sound, I've made him sound really old at 28. He's not really old at 28 at all. Six caps for Colombia. But again, would have been probably our fifth or sixth choice centre half this season. So I moved him on. But hey, uh, before we move forward, we should look at who we've actually signed. Because you're thinking, 
A lot of the first team have been sold this summer. You better have made some good signings lately. Don't worry, I did. And if you're aware about Nathan Baxter leaving, don't worry, he's been replaced by Dominic Lovakovic, a world-class Dominic Lovakovic, who has joined us from Juventus for £9 million after they signed him for 37 and a half and Newcastle spent £20 million on Nilly. So we've signed him for a very cut price, had some good scenes in the Premier League as Newcastle's first choice goalkeeper, had some good scenes at Juventus as their first choice goalkeeper, slipped to second choice last year, so I swooped and said thank you very much, brought him in. He is going to be our first choice keeper this year. He will give us the option of extra leadership on the pitch of some good experience in goal. Yes, he's a bit suspect in some areas, but nothing I'm going to worry about because he is a very, very good signing and a sign of where we are going into this season. Joining him alongside, well, joining alongside him in defence, if I can't put words in the right order, is Italian former under 21 international Wisdom Amy, who has joined us from Manchester United for £16 million. Really good looking player for for us for this season. He's had some good seasons on loan from United in the Championship and League One with uh, Reading and Coventry respectively. 16 million doesn't feel like a big gamble on a player with a decent amount of upside. He's pretty quick, he's pretty strong, he's decent all round. He's still young enough to develop as a player and can play at right back and centre half, which means he is great, great cover for us. And I think he's going to be a big part of us of our squad for the future. But also adding to our defence, Christian Ferreira, a 22-year-old Paraguayan under-23 international who can play everywhere in defence and curiously on the right wing, which I'm not entirely sure why. He has joined us on a free transfer from PSG, and signing players from PSG is always a big boost. He was one of those players that they kind of hoarded because they like to hoard great young players. They signed him from Olympia in Paraguay. I'm going to give him a second chance at a good career. He's going to go on loan this season, probably, and then hopefully he'll come back and be a real force in our first team long term. Similarly, Luis Boada, a Spanish under-19, is a Florida under-19, that's not the age of 21 now. He's joined us. He didn't get a work permit. He's gone out on loan to Pumas in Mexico, which worked out really well for Alejandro Garnacho, by the way, who has come back a quality player. Started his career at Barcelona, joined Atletico Madrid for 325k and joined us on a free. And again, I think he's got the upside to be a real force for us in that defensive midfield role in central midfield in defence. He'll play anywhere we need him and hopefully he'll develop in the process to become a really good player. Likewise, one for the future, Bigger and Byron Maggi has gone on loan to Ferenc Faros after joining us from Club Brugge on a free. Came through Brugge's youth team and I think is going to be a really big star for us down the line. But for now, he's an under-21 international for Belgium. He's got some developing to do, and Ferenc Faros is a pretty good place to go and do that. So hopefully we'll see more of him down, down the line in the future. However, on the first team side of things, an under-21 Spanish international called Ricardo Serna, a centre-half who is big, who is quickish, who is good in the air, who is a strong all-rounder, he has joined us, would you believe, on a free from Real Madrid, and he's played a, played for Real Madrid in La Liga. He's also been in their B team for quite some time. I think this guy's got an enormous upside and will become a really big player alongside Pedro and Sunday Obadima for us this season. Our three Spanish centre-halves are going to be a real boon for us, and I'm really excited to see what this kid becomes in the future. And another free transfer joining us from Red Bull Leipzig, is Konrad Leimer, a, an Austrian international 98 caps roster. He's 32, he's not a long-term signing. He's had a good career, though, in the Bundesliga, and I think he's probably picked up a fair few trophies in his time. He's won the Austrian Premier League, the Austrian FA Cup, and a couple of pre-season tournaments for us. But look at this guy's versus. He's right back, right wing back, centre mid, centre defensive mid, right wing. Plays down the left wing as well. Can even play as an attacking midfielder if we get desperate. He's still got his pace. He's still got his tackling. He's still got everything we need from him to develop younger players and be an important player for us. Very, very excited to welcome Conrad Lima to the club. He'll probably play as a right back primarily for us, but if I need to fit him in elsewhere, I will fit him in elsewhere. And one of our young signings we had queued up for a while, Darren Taylor, has finally joined us and looks like he's going to be a regular first team of this season. He joined us from Sundowns in South Africa, the same club we got Glenn Gould from, for 575k. He's 20 years old, 16 caps for South Africa already, 
and valued anywhere between 49 and 57 million. I think this kid is a big, big signing for us. I think we're going to see some decent goals, assists, everything for him. I think he's a really, really big positive for us. I'm really happy to welcome him to the club. Also another player we lined up a while ago, Pablo Dragoon has joined us from Caleres in Argentina for 5 million. I've learned about for this season for Rochdale and League 2 because he's not quite ready for first team football, but I think he will be down in down the line in the future. Maybe a season in League 2 will get him there and we can see the best of him. I'm really hoping for some good stuff down the line from Pablo Dragoon. I think he is our long-term right back and hopefully he proves me right. He's number 23 international for Argentina and hopefully a long-term first teamer for us. And another player who's joined us sadly without a work permit is Jordi Ferrer. He has joined us from Manchester City on a free transfer. I'm going to try and loan him out somewhere and get him a work permit as quickly as I can. But he's had a decent run. He's played in the Premier League before. He's only 23 and again lots of upside. Can play defensive mid or central mid and we use both roles. So he will come into play sometime down the line. I just need to get him capped by the Spanish first team I think and then he should be ready to go. So we'll keep an eye on him and see what happens. Hopefully there's a lot a loan up down the line. A few clubs will be looking at as you can see. So we'll see what happens to him in the future. Now, £5.5 million has brought Danish international, very versatile right and left sided player, Jakub Brun Larsen to the club from Sheffield United. Player moving across the Premier League. They've taken a £7 million haircut on him, but they have had him now for what, six seasons and he seems to have done pretty well for him the entire time. I signed him to be a right back primarily for us. He will play wherever we need him to play though. In fact, in our first game of the season, he's probably going to play on the wing due to a few players being unfit. But either way, I think he's a good signing, a bit more experience into the club. And I think for a guy who's also played for Anderlecht, Borussia Dortmund and Hoffenheim, he's probably won a few things in his time. Uh, he hasn't, apparently, which is interesting. But even so, we'll see some good from him. I know we'll see some good from him. And I think he's going to be a really good signing, one of our better signings for the season. But of course, time will tell. And uh, we've got time on our side, so let's see who else has come in. And we signed a Norwegian international, another 30 year old. No, we're being a bit of an old man's brigade from this window, but it's definitely going to be worthwhile, I think, as we progress. He's there just to kind of hold the left back role for this season while Gerson Furt is off developing in Reading. Norwegian international, 70 caps for them. He has joined us for £10 million, which is quite an outlay, if I'm honest. But I needed to spend the money to get the left back in. He's joined us from Everton and he's played a lot of Premier League games whilst he's been with Everton as well. So hopefully this will turn out to be a really good signing for us. And even if it just fills a gap for a year or two, I think he'll get the job done for us. He's still got his quickness. He's pretty good in just general defensive fullback backy kind of role. There's nothing there that I would consider weak on him. So hopefully he can fill the gap for us, develop some young players while he's here, and we'll get the best out of him. Another in and out player is Ivorian Junior Beater. He came in without a work permit, so he's gone out on loan for to Benfica. We paid 3.5 million to sign from Athletic Bill Bow. Benfica have paid to loan him from us for the season. Hopefully, he will get capped by the Ivory Coast and get himself a work permit fairly shortly thereafter. But he is pretty good as a defensive midfielder and as a regular midfielder, a position we needed to fill with the loss of John Stones for sure. So he comes in, he's quick, he's got some stuff to offer us with set pieces and he can keep the ball pretty well, creates things pretty well, all round pretty good. As long as he gets a work permit down the line, he could turn into something special. And because I needed more centre-half right-wingers and defensive midfielders, I don't know why he can do all three, Fernando Amaral is a Portuguese international. He is 22 years old and he has joined us from FC Porto for the princely sum of £1.4 million. He has played a fair number of games for FC Porto in the Portuguese Premier League. I don't know how he managed to get himself an international cap bouncing between the A and B sides for Porto, but there we go. But even so, he has joined us. He's got some big potential. He's going to be in and around the fringes of our squad for this season and can fill in in some good places. His stats in every position he can play are pretty decent. So ooh, I say in every position he can play. He's a terrible crosser. I don't know why they started using him as a right winger. But, you know, that's life. We'll figure it out. And hopefully he's going to become a big star for us. And next up was a player I've been chasing for quite a while. Matias Senior is a 28-year-old Brazilian. No caps. He's a right back. 
We signed him from Flamengo for £15 million. Pounds. I've been tracking him for about three seasons, and he started to look really, really good. So it felt like the right time to bring him in and have a proper, long, hard look at him in our first team. He will be our first choice right back, I would imagine, this season, and I can't complain about that too much. He can do stuff with free kicks, he can do stuff with throw-ins, he can do stuff wherever we need to do stuff. And he can still fill in a little bit further down the right wing, which is why I've not brought Brendan Land back this season. I'm pretty happy with Matthias Senior as a signing, and hopefully you guys will be too when we get into the action proper. And another youngster who's joined us is Croatian under-19 international Christian Milic. He's joined us without a work permit, I've forgotten to put him on the development list. Let's take care of that right now, before I forget, so he can go out and get himself some experience somewhere, and indeed a work permit, but another player with huge potential, huge upside to him. And he's already pretty decent. He will probably make the make the team in, say, a cup game for us against a lower league side. But even so, if we can get him out on loan, get him something good in terms of his future. He came on a free. I was scouting the players who just generate randomly, and he came up, and I was like, okay, cool. We'll have him on a free. £11.5 million he could be worth. I think that's pretty good business. Even if he never plays a game, we just sell him on. I've done well there, but there is one last big signing, a player I work shifting players around, shifting budgets around, so hard to bring in. He's come from Paris Saint-Germain. Do you want to go and meet him? I think you do. Ladies and gents, and everyone else, Yukim Konoplia, the Ukrainian international, has joined us from Paris Saint-Germain for £14.25 million. They signed him from Barca, Barca signed him from Shakhtar Donetsk. He's hardly played for Barca or PSG which has probably affected his development somewhat over the course of the last few years, but he's still a decent player. He can play either side for us. He will play probably left-back and right-back over the course of this season, depending on where we have gaps in filling. He may sit on the bench, he may fill in wherever we need him to fill in. It doesn't really make a difference. He's a good full-back, and that is our, our final signing. And I think we can all agree that this team has massively improved over the summer. But let's have a little bit of a look at the squad depth chart just to see how everyone fits in and where we look in terms of strength this season. So looking at this, I think it could be a bit misleading because this is our best striker, is Taki Kubo. It will be Parody starting up top for us or Skorshatovsky, but we've got McAtee and Gordon who can also fill in there if we need to. On the left wing, our depth again pretty good. We've got Ruiz, we've got Gordon, Parody, Solari and Araujo can play there. On the right side, Gordon, Kubo, Makati, Reigny and Salari. Very good on that side as well. In central midfield are our top five. Ruiz, Kubo, Lima, Makati and Reigny. In defensive midfield, Lima, Page, Maitland, Niles, Serna and Amaral are all top options. At left back, Canoclia, Araujo, Bjorkan, Ben Johnson and Maitland, Niles are still there. Centre half, Pedro, Obedima, Page, Ami. Amy and Serna, all pretty good there. In fact, all so good that three of, two of them sorry, weren't even at the club last season. At right back, Pedro, Lima, Matiasinho, Canoplia, and Ben Johnson. And finally in goal, Livakovic, Alassad, who was on loan, out on loan last year. Pereira, who came in a couple of scenes ago, spent last year on loan. And Dauphin, who we've seen before, and Rocha. So we've got good players throughout the team. I think I'm pretty happy with how we've set things up for this season. And looking at the league tape or the fixtures so we can see and pre-season, of course, we've only lost once in pre-season, narrowly to Borussia Dortmund. We've beaten Atletico Madrid, we've beaten Benfica, we've beaten every team in China. We've beaten Hatafe, we've had a good pre-season all in all. And we face Leicester on Monday in the opening game of the season. So that will be the episode on Monday. And that lets me wrap up this episode. Editing's going to take me a while, that's going to be fun, but who cares, right? Thank you for watching, guys. Join me on Monday to see how this season kicks off. I have, as always, been chasing them. Like and subscribe if you haven't done already. And until next time, thank you for watching. See you all very soon. Have a good one.